Um, so, do you guys remember back in the day when we did the when we talked about the intermediate value theorem, and then we had the bisection method? Do you guys remember that, where you had um, um, using the bisection method, where we had, for example. So this was the idea. Let's say you had a function, something like that, let's say. And um, you had a uh, left. Uh, so you had a, an interval, right? And you would plug in. So like here, um, I don't know. Let's call it x0 and x1 maybe. Um, and uh, remember you would plug in uh, the two x values and then we said okay well if it's positive on one side and then negative on the other then what does that mean it yeah, has to go through zero somewhere right so then you split it up in in half you cut it in half right and then you did it again uh, so like here for example we would test say so right halfway right so let's call this x2 maybe <laughs> So then here, notice it would be on the left subinterval, right? So between x0 and x2. So then you would uh, split it in half again. And then you would split it in half again. And then so every, every time you did the bisection method, you would split the interval in half, right? And um, so if you think about it, it takes quite a while to get an accurate um, an accurate zero, right? So remember when we did it, we didn't do it more than three times. Um, and in practice, really, you would do it with a computer because um, the computers are good at doing things more, uh, over and over again, the same thing over and over again. But it's still pretty um, slow. So um, Newton's method, uh, so here let's contrast this. So New what's called Newton's method, and I'll just draw the idea right here, and then we'll, we'll derive it. But the idea is uh, different, and it uses derivatives. So let's just take some kind of function here. Um, and the idea is the same thing. We're looking for uh, to approximate the zeros of a function. And the idea with Newton's method is that um, you, have a, uh, for, you don't have an interval. You have a guess. So you start off with a guess. So like for example, um, let's just say hypothetically, um, your guess, well, I'll call that x0. And what you do with Newton's method is um, you find the uh, tangent line at that point. So like for example, if I, right here at x0 uh, is this point here. Um, this is f of x0. <coughs> and do you guys know how to find the if you were to, if you were asked to find the equation of the tangent line at this point, would you be able to? Sure, right? Okay. So this is the idea. So you, you have the tangent line here. Looks like that, right? Okay, now notice where the tangent line uh, crosses the x-axis. So the tangent line crosses the x-axis right here, right? X marks the spot. Okay, so then if at that point you do the same thing over again, you find the tangent line. Notice, so here I'm going to call this uh, x1. So let's see here, uh, how about this blue color? Okay, so if right here I find the tangent line, so it looks something like, that and what do you notice about where it crosses the x-axis compared to the other one closer. it's a little bit closer right so here I'm gonna call this one x2 and if at this point you find the tangent line again uh, let's see I'll do gray now you notice that you're
very close. And typically with Newton's method, as long as your guess is pretty good uh, and the function isn't crazy, um, within even if the first tangent line is not very close, after like three, you're you're really really close. And then if you do it again, then then it's really accurate. So um, so notice that the more you do new, the more iterations of Newton's method you do. The, it gets closer faster as opposed to the bisection where it's always you're always getting uh, whatever your, your inter interval is you're always getting uh, you can never do any better than half of whatever the interval is Newton's method you can get close really fast um, so we'll, we'll look at some examples but um, so that's the idea so does the idea make sense yes I don't know. Maybe. Do you want me to? <laughs> One of the. Uh, okay. All right. So let's try to derive it. Derive Newton's method. Okay. All right. So let's draw a picture. This is not uh, terribly difficult. Uh, we just need to drop a picture. So this is, we're just going to use the same picture again. Um. And so what we're trying to do here, uh, let's see, how about, okay, so I'm just going to use, um, I'm going to just pick this point right here as uh, my guess here, right? Okay, and then this is f of x naught, right? And... Um, and if I draw the tangent line here again, so here's my tangent line. Okay, roughly something like that. Okay, so what I'm looking for actually is uh, this point right here, x1. Okay, so the only the reason why so this is not difficult what makes it difficult is that there are no numbers here so then it just seems much more difficult but it's not that bad um, let's start off by writing down um, the equation of the tangent line so what would the equation of the tangent line be y is equal to what so the slope right what's m what is the, the slope of the tangent line F prime of, it's just the derivative, right? Okay, so F prime of, where is it that I'm finding the derivative? At X naught, right? The purple point here that I have, which is, so F prime of X naught. Um, and then let's write it in um, uh, point slope form because it'll be a, a little bit easier to work with. Um, so x minus what? So remember the point slope form. So it looks like this, right? Back in algebra, it looked like this. Y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1, right? This is how you remember it in algebra class. So it's the same thing, just it's in uh, calculus. So instead of m, we write f prime because that's the, the slope is the derivative, right? Um, we're using x naught instead of x1 just because, I mean, it's just, so no different. So this is just x minus x naught, right? And then instead of having minus y1 on the left side, we're going to just move it over. So then what is it going to be? Instead of y1, how would I write it? It's just the y value at that point, which is what? f of x naught, right? Does that make sense? So it's the same exact formula. It's just written more calculus e in a more calculus e, e way um, okay so um, so that's fine so what we're looking for notice is this is the equation of the black line that I drew right here right I'm trying to figure out where does that black line equal to zero right 
So basically I'm looking for, okay, well, I'm trying to figure out when does this equal to zero? That's the answer to this question right here. Whoa, this question right here. The x value where the line equals zero is this x1 that I called it in red, yes? Does that make sense? Okay, all right, so uh, let's set it equal to zero and solve it then. So uh, I wanna know when is f prime of x naught times x minus x naught plus f of x naught, when is this equal to zero, right? And the solution to this, okay, now, is gonna be x one, this point right here. Does that make sense? So I'm solving for x one. Yes, no, maybe? Are you guys sad with that change that I just made just now? Should I go back to how it was? Solve for x. Right? So do you guys agree, if I solve for x right here, this x right there, that that x is the same as this x right there that I drew on the picture? Yeah? Okay. So that's what we're doing. We're going to solve for that. All right. So this is not difficult. You guys know how to do this. Um, so how about we um, uh, distribute f prime of x naught? Is that okay? Um, okay, so I have that, right? Again, what am I solving for? I'm solving for this x right here. So I'll even color it in red to make it easier to see. All right, so what do I do? Oh, I forgot the equal zero business. All right, what should I do? Exactly. Move everything over to the other side. That's right. Okay. So this is going to equal to, um, let's see, f prime x naught times x naught and then minus f of x naught, right? So far so good? Okay. Now if you divide everything by, what would you divide everything by? f prime of x naught, right? Divide both sides, because we're solving for x, right? The red x. So do you guys agree that we just divide through by f prime of x naught here, here, and here? Right? Okay. So then, um, what do I end up with? That x is equal to, well, f prime of x naught cancels right there, right? So we get x naught minus f of x naught over f prime of x naught. Okay, now, uh, so are we all okay with that? That makes sense, right? All right, so that was just a little, a little moving, moving around. So this is this x1 that I drew right here. So meaning, so the point, the x value where the tangent line crosses the x-axis, uh, you can find it directly by finding that x naught minus f of x naught over f prime of x naught. Yes. Okay. Now the 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 thing. So that's the first one, right? What about the next one? Well, if you were to just repeat the exact same thing again, right? So this was just some random point that I just. It was just, we started off with a guess, right? So then that gives you another x value. What if you do the same exact thing at that x value? So if you repeat, you would get a second x value, which I could draw here if uh, we want. It would be the tangent line right here. That tangent line in the red. And this x2, that I put down right here 
x2 would be the point where that line crosses the uh, x-axis. But what is that equal to? If you apply the same exact, you don't have to do the whole thing over again, just apply the exact same uh, reasoning that we did for this one, what would this equal to? Instead of x1 equals x0, it would be x2 equals to what? Exactly, x1, because that's the x value where you're at, right? Minus f of x1 over f prime of x1, exactly. So it's an iterative process. You just do it over and over and over again. And so then, this is Newton's method. The Newton's method, uh, Newton's method formula is basically just that. It's x sub n plus one, meaning the next x value is simply, what would it be, x sub n, right? Notice one less than n plus one, minus f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. By simply repeating what we did, so we did this once, if you just did it over and over and over again, then you get that general formula. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right, so let's do an, an example here. So let's use this for uh, approximating something. Um, let's say, for example, um, so let's say you want to use Newton's method. Um, to approximate um, an intersection point of, uh, let's say, uh, sine of x and um, x cubed minus 2x squared plus one, <coughs> aka solve sine x equals to x cubed minus two x squared plus one. Right, we're looking for basically where they're equal to. Now, uh, is there a uh, formula that we know how to do this? No, there is no formula, right? So you have a cubic and then equals to sine. There's no way, right? Uh, so uh, one thing, though, that you have to keep in mind is Newton's method is to find zeros of functions. And here we're being asked to find the intersection of two functions. Well, uh, how would I move things around so that I can use Newton's method to answer this question? Because Newton's method is for zeros of functions. The question here is find the intersection of two functions. What would I do? What would I apply Newton's method to? I need a function. What would be my function? There's no Newton's method for two functions, right? It's only on one function but it's to find where functions are equal to zero. So what can you do? Combine yeah, move, move them over all to one side so that you set it equal to zero. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So for example, if you just take this, move it to the left, you would end up with sine x minus x cubed plus two x squared minus one set that equals to zero, and that's your function that you're trying to find the zeros of. Does that make sense? How that's an equivalent uh, question? Okay, now the wrinkle is that you need, uh, you need a, a guess, um, and uh, well, I mean, we, could, we can just come up with a number here and hope that it's gonna work out. I don't know, should we? 
Might as well, right? Might as well. Okay. Typically, you graph it, and then you just kind of pick something that's kind of close. But let's just go for it. Let's just pick something. What do you guys think? What should we pick? Well, notice that there's a sign in there. So, um, uh, well, one, well, mm, maybe, yeah, let's do zero. No? Um, well, sine of zero is zero, which is good. Um, I guess the problem that I'm, uh, it'll be fine. Okay. I mean, I honestly don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. I think so. Okay, I'm going to guess x equals 0. If you want a better guess, you graph it, and then you pick a number that's kind of close. But anyway, this is fine. All right, so um, all you do is, so now notice when we're going to do, we're going to do Newton's method. So it's, uh, you're only going to find one zero at a time, right? So you're not, even if there's more than one zero, you're not going to find all of them at once. You guess, and then the one that it gives you, it's going to be the one that's uh, not necessarily closest, but it'll lead you to the one that's near your guess. And then if you want another one, then you would have to kind of go looking for more kind of thing, you know. Um, but anyways, okay, so what would it be? X of 1 is equal to, uh, well, okay, so hold on. X, my, my guess is X equals 0, but let me call that X sub 0, right? So X of 1 is X 0, let me just write it down, minus F of X 0 over f prime of x0, right? That's what I'm going to find. So what is that equal to? That's 0 minus, what's f of 0? Minus 1 over f prime at 0. What's f prime at 0? Well, I better find f prime, right? Don't you think? <laughs> okay, so what is f prime? Cosine x minus 3x squared plus 4x, right? Okay, so what do I get when I plug in uh, 0 into that? Cosine of 0 is 1, so then I just get 1, so this is equal to 1. Okay. So now what? Okay, do it again. That's right. Okay, so x sub 2. Um, all right, so what is x sub 2 equal to? 1 minus f of 1 minus f, uh, well, let's write it out. So f of 1 over f prime of 1, right? So this is 1 minus 1 minus um, sine of 1, and then minus 1 plus 2 minus 1. So what is that? That's just sine of 1, right? Yes? OK. Because you end up with 2 minus 2. Um, and then divided by f prime of 1, which is? Cosine of 1, uh, what is that? Plus 1, right? What is that? Well, we need to approximate it, right? Because we can't find. So let's do that. So it's OK, so 1 minus sine of 1 uh, divided by cosine of 1 plus one. Okay. Wowzers. Look at that. What does that mean? Pretty, pretty close, right? Notice the difference between the one before and the one after. We're already really close, right? Um, so if we, well, might as well, 991, uh, hold on, 991, one, two, seven, three, one, three, two. Okay, so let's use all of them. Okay, so let's say I was going to do this again. So I would have 
uh, all that stuff, right? 0 0.9912, blah, 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 right? Minus sine of 0.99, blah, 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 minus 0.9912, blah, 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 cubed, plus 2, uh, blah, 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 plus 1. Okay, so now this is getting pretty terrible, but it's okay. We can do copy paste, right? I think. Okay, so it looks something like that. Yes? I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, it is minus one. Okay, so uh, at this point, I mean, we're pretty close. We just kind of want to uh, just l take a look at it and see. Um, See kind of how close we are, just for fun. So I'll, I'll put it into decimals so that uh, we can kind of see it a little bit better. But um, so here we have 0.991273. Actually, maybe I should do this. Oh wait, can't you just just do like declare a constant here? Like, oh my gosh. Can you do like like this? Okay, wait. X two equals one minus sine of one divided by cosine of one um, plus one. That's X two. And then can't I use X two on the other one? Like do X two minus Sine of x2. Oh, yeah, see? Oh, pretty nice. x2 cubed uh, plus 2 times x2 minus 1. And then divided by cosine of x2 uh, minus 3x2 squared. Uh, plus 4x2. Duh! Oh, what happened? Did I punch that in right? But it looks like it understood it. Oh, that's right. You're right. Okay, wait. So let's go back. Uh, did I punch that in wrong? Huh. Maybe it's in degrees. Oh, Desmos is disappointing us. Oh, no. Is it in... Or maybe when I found it earlier, it was in degrees. Did anybody else do this one? The x2 on their calculators? Um, it might actually be the calculator I used earlier was in. It could have been in uh, degrees. This is possible, now that I think about it. Sine of 1. How do you tell the, oh yeah, you tell it here, right? Uh, radians. Yeah, so I guess it isn't 0.99, all that jazz. It's 0.45, okay, all right. So see, we had it wrong. That's my, my fault. That's my fault. Okay, so this is closer to 0.45-ish. Now, obviously, if you're trying to get accurate results, well, then... You need to have as many decimals as possible. Okay, uh, now, uh, so here, 
uh, we had we got 0 0.33333 Three, two, three, four, zero, two, six. Whew. Okay, now, um, what's x4 equal to? Well, aha. Magic. All right, let's see. So we don't want to write down all that stuff all over again. Des, des magic. <laughs> all right, so if we punch it all in again. Oh, can you guys see that okay? I guess you can, huh? All right, so I. Now, can you see it? All right, so I just said the other one was x3. So what would this one be? This would be this would be x4, right? Mm -hmm. So now notice what's the difference? Not very much, right? So x4 now is 0.35. So 0.355 ish. No, sure it is, because look, we went from the very first one, our guess was 1, right? So that's this one, 1. Then we went to 0.45. What's the difference between those two? It's pretty big, right? Yeah. But then from there, though, the next one is 0.33. Oh, so well, what's the difference between 0.45 and 0 0.33? 0 0.12. 0 0.12, right? So that's better, right? But now notice what's the difference between 0.33 and 0.35? 0 0.02. 0 0.02, exactly. So notice how the difference is getting, you're getting much closer every time. So here you have, um, it's, oh, yeah, right. right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So then if you do the same thing again, uh, but this time you do, so this is just for fun really at this point. Uh, X4. Four, four. So notice when you um, tell your calculator, your graphing calculator, to find uh, zeros, notice that it asks you for an interval, but then it asks you for a guess, right? So that's because it, what it does is it's kind of a combination of the bisection method and Newton's method. Um, so it'll stay within the interval you give it, but then to get to the zero faster than the bisection method would, it does Newton's method um, because um, it's much faster, as you can see. So what's the next one? Notice 0.34348. So x5 is 0.348. ish so now and then the successive ones will be even closer and closer and closer does that make sense and uh, so compare that to what it would look like if you did the bisection method for example so let's say I mean just if you just kind of think about it so it's a little bit different because you have uh, Uh, in Newton's method, you only have a guess, and then by section, you have an interval. But let's just say, hypothetically, you went from 0 to 1. You're like, oh, well, I'm sure there's a 0 in there. So here we did Newton's method 1, 2, 3, 4 times, right? So if you split it 4 times, so 1, let's say 2, 3, well, let's go over here, 0 0.125, and then 4, 0 0.06 ish, ish. I guess the difference isn't as dramatic in this example, but it is still better, right? 
0 0.06 and 0 0.01 off. Um, but then, of course, that's also because we have a, uh, a um, what's it called? Um, a pretty small interval to begin with. And the other thing is with Newton's method, we didn't even, we completely shot in the dark, right? We didn't even look at a picture. We're like, ah, who cares? Let's just, just plug in something and then we'll see. And we found one, right? Um, but Newton's method doesn't always work. Can you guys think of a case where uh, Newton's method wouldn't work? So, well, yeah, of course, if there isn't a zero, then yeah, of course it, it wouldn't work. But, um, but, just a, a think of a normal, just a, a nice normal function. Can you think of a a guess that would that would break Newton's method? No, no, no. So the function's nice. So like this one. This is my function. Let's say. What did you say, Alex? Yeah. If you hit, if you happen to hit a maximum, what's going to happen? Yeah, you just get stuck there, right? So like for example, if I, uh, you know, happen to you know, by bad luck or whatever, um, you know, happen to get something like, uh, for whatever reason. So in this case, you have yeah, so I would have to, for example, something like, let's just say this, let's say, I mean, the, you know, the chances are pretty small, right? But theoretically, let's say this was your uh, guess at whatever point, you know, let's say x4 for whatever reason, right? Well, you get the tangent line, right? It crosses right here. This would be x5. And then, and then what happens when you get the tangent line there? It's never going to cross the x-axis anymore, right? So then you're stuck. It's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, you're just like stuck in the teeter-totter. You and just can't get it. Well, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't get, uh, you wouldn't get anything because you would not find the x value that gives you this. Basically, what um, you would get um, that it doesn't exist, right? So maybe like a zero in the denominator, for example. Um, so then it would be undefined, you know. Um, so, but I mean, if you think about it, what are the chances of actually hitting? This is pretty small, right? Um, you don't even have to try, and, and the chances of you accidentally falling on the exact point where, you know, it's at a maximum is pretty low. So, so yeah, cool stuff, you know. Newton's method, fun times. Um, yes. To find the y value. For which one? Yeah, not for the, yeah, not for um, this one. Uh, not for these, because you're looking for the. Uh, um, oh, you mean like for the intersection points? Like, let's say, yeah, 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 you would, okay. if you wanted to find the y value, sure. Yeah, so you would plug in the x value um, into either of the two, because it's the okay. same, right? The idea is that they're, it's an intersection okay. point, so you could plug it into either one. Um, yeah, so um, any other questions? No? Okay. Um, so I 